going to kick off our media availabilities here today with Kyle Bush and Jeff Dickerson from Spire Motorsports. Thank you both for joining us. We really appreciate you spending some time with us. Before we go to questions, I do want to make sure that it is understood that this will serve as Kyle Bush's media availability bullpen requirement. So if you have questions related to the playoffs, please ask those now as well. Um, Jeff or Kyle, would you like to say anything before we get started or go straight to questions? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say something real quick. Um, just to sort of reiterate our press release uh, from KBM that this is obviously um, a super bittersweet moment um, with everything that's kind of gone on over the years with Samantha and I starting the truck team back in 2010 and having this dream and it becoming a reality and um, all that's due to the great men and women, everybody that's walked through the doors at KBM that's put in their heart and soul to building that place to what it's been and the successful organization of what it's been to today. So, um, you know, I couldn't be happier with the the way that the business has gone and, you know, 100 wins and 18 different winners and drivers that have come through there that have now made it to the Xfinity or Cup Series level. And uh, it's just been, you know, a real dream come true for, for me and for KBM and, and for our family. So, um, you know, I I just feel like I haven't been able to give it as much of my devoted attention as it needs um, and being around as much with Rexton racing and, and family stuff and me racing and trying to focus on that and, and being with the cup team and things. And so, um, you know, there's some conversations that kind of happened with the crew chiefs and whatnot that just kind of made me start thinking about it. And then um, crazy over here showed up at the door. And um, we had a conversation, and um, yeah, just kind of all turn of events happened really, really fast. So um, excited about the future of it, and um, you know, kind of here to announce also that I will still be involved um, with Spire Motorsports on the Truck Series level, and still be a consultant. Also, still run my five Truck Series races with our amazing partners at Zuri's Transport and continue to work on their B2B efforts and angles in our sport to continue to drive their business forward. Um, and so it'll be you know, still worthwhile for me to see that team succeed with all the people and everything that we've had there for over the years. And um, I'm excited about those that'll stay and um, you know, getting a key fob that turns off at 6 p.m. All right, we'll go ahead and go for questions for Kyle and Jeff. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll work to get a mic to you guys, um, get in as many as we can. We'll start with Lee and then go to Bob. Hey, Spencer, catchfence.com. I never heard Jeff referred to as a unicorn before, but I'm glad you found him. Uh -huh. um, they do exist. When, when you look at what you've been doing with Brexton and the time it takes, and I'm sure Jeff can understand that because he comes from a dirt track background too. I mean, is this... Will this give you ample time not to feel as guilty when you're at the dirt track and, you know, just helping him do his career and doing your day job with, at RCR? Um, yeah, sure. I would, I would agree with that. Um, you know, this isn't the end or the shutdown of KBM. KBM doesn't cease to exist. It still exists. We just now race an eight-year-old at the, you know, grassroots level. So, um, you know, the... I guess the logo can still carry on the shirts and his fire suit and everything else. Uh, you know, it just won't be as prominent or at all on the uh, on the truck series efforts. But um, you know, certainly with being around and, and traveling and, and going through the Midwest Swing, for instance, I think we raced 12 races in 15 days or something up there. So, you know, it's it's a lot, and that's a lot of time away from from both aspects. But um, you know, there's only so much time in a day, and only so much of Kyle that can can accomplish everything. All right, uh, Bob. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. I had a couple for Jeff. First, you know, announcement a couple of weeks ago about you spending a lot of money on Charter, and then this purchase. How are you guys? You have an investor, or how are you doing it financially? Here's what I hear. You're. It's not about the transaction, or the structure. I think what you're asking is. Are you guys for real, right? Or something must be going on behind the, uh, you know, the scenes there. Um, um, I'd say TJ and I's uh, names are on the check. And, uh, well, Jenna, as you know, in your article, I think you described us as pivotal and have uh, done a lot of these deals. And so from the first time that we, uh, you know, announced the deal when we did the 78, I'm all for skepticism 
right? I think some of it's healthy. Um, but I don't know how many more of these deals we have to do before people know we're for real. And um, you, you have this alliance with Trackhouse with their driver, and yet you have a Hendrick relationship. They have a RCR, ECR relationship. So what, what relationship are you n next year? Yeah, so uh, thanks for um, that, Bob. So um, our relationship with Hendrick continues. You know, so we're still, um, we're still a Hendrick. We have a technical alliance with them. All of our engines will be through there. Um, the, the third car's engines will be through there. Um, I mean, just as a, a quick note, I don't, I don't know there's been anybody, um, um, certainly in, 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 in my NASCAR um, career, um, and I mean, for both of us in a way, right, um, than uh, Mr. Hendrick, you know, and, and uh, his support from the um, very beginning, he's, um, you know, he's always, uh, you know, kind of treated me like his, you know, illegitimate son, right? I mean, he's always been there to kind of like push me and answer the phones and um, any dumb idea that I have, he's, he's right there to, uh, um, you know, show me that there's a way uh, through those things. So that doesn't stop. Um, you know, uh, ultimately, where the rubber meets the road on our cup program next year, it'll it'll look uh, it'll look similar to to um, you know what we have now. Pit crews, at least on two of the cars, uh, pit crews will be through there. Technical data will be through there, and uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, the, the show goes on with Hendrick. All right, Jenna. Jenna Fryer, Associated Press. Both my questions are for Jeff. Um, Welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, just following up off of your, you guys are real. Um, the first question is: Is the forty million dollar figure real? Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into the um, specifics um, or um, of that, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, what's kind of been reported, um, again, and I don't mean to riff off of what I, you know, kind of my tone to Bob, but it's just like. Um, I'm not sure, like, we're a major league sport, you know? We've been around for 75 years, you know? We portray ourselves to corporate America like we're, uh, like we're major league, and we are major league. So um, I don't, that number that's, that's been, uh, um, I guess, uh, reported is, uh, I don't know why it's such a, you know, why it's such a shock, right? Um, I think for us, um, we think that, huh? It's great for the sport. Yeah, no, it's great for the sport. I think that uh, um, it's value. Yeah, we still have, we still have a ways to go. You know, like I, um, we're major league. I, I, you know, I don't know why. Um, it's, and Jen, not that this is about your question specifically, right? But it's just like the, the tone of it. It's like it's like a major league sport with minor league question. You know what I mean? Like we're like this is a real deal. So um, I hope it's four hundred million, right? So. And then. Um you, you keep saying you guys are real. Like, what, what do you envision Spire becoming? Whew. I don't know what else. I, you know, I mean, I just think, like, from, you know, it feels like we're, um, it just feels like we're always trying to prove something. You know, like, hey, what's going on? Or, hey, where's this really, you know, like, what's this coming from? Or, like, when we first did the 78 deal, everybody was just like, oh, my God, what's happening? Which, us, too. When we did the 78, it was us, too. Um but, you know, real for us is, is um, we want to be a playoff car. We want to be winners, you know. Um, we want to, uh, um, you know, it just feels like we're just trying to break out of that mold where everybody's just like, oh, man, are you guys even trying? Or, you know, and it's, it's um, we've made significant strides, you know. I mean, even before, you know, this and, and, um, and what we've done this summer. I mean, like, we, we're, you know, we're doing it. And, and uh, I was talking with somebody back there um, in the garage, the back where we were parked this week, and I was just like, you know, I think everybody stepped up their game, but so is everybody else, right? So um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's not even something that you can see. Maybe it's just the way that you're kind of like perceived and talked about. But you know, um, I think we're making strides. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, Bristol was pretty decent for us till you know till it wasn't. But you know, I mean, we're legitimately leading laps, and it feels like with that seven car, we're, you know bouncing off all the guys, you know, a couple of times we've got Kyle, you know, this year, right? So it's like we just want to be in the conversation where it's not a um, surprise that we're up there. And Kyle, um, now that it's sort of winding down at the NASCAR national level, was your time and investment worth it? Yeah, I mean, I would say so. I feel like a lot of the personal relationships and things over the years, whether it's been Eric Phillips, Rick Wren, uh, Rudy Fugel, all of that stuff, you know, it, 
Chris Gavehart's another one uh, from our stable. But, you know, I, I think that we've had um, a great ride and a great run, and, and it's been worth it in a lot of sense. You know, I've had a lot of fun um, racing super late models, racing trucks, winning late models, winning trucks. Um, I've got a uh, – storage facility now full or needing to get one full of of show cars and things of past memories of stuff that i've been uh, that i've accomplished and cars that i've accomplished uh big wins in so um i would say yes uh now not per year all right jordan go ahead Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic, this question's for Kyle. Um, you kind of talked about how the kind of progression to get to this point to wanting to sell. Has it been just this year? Has it kind of been an ongoing thing as, as Braxton's been getting older and more involved in the racing thing you know, across the country that the realization of this, you just don't have the bandwidth to, to continue to do this? Yeah, no, I was I, – I was. look, we had a uh, a great deal this year with, with Chevrolet and uh, with Rev Racing and Max and all the guys over there to, to carry on with um, – with Sanchez and of course the the Chase Purdy deal as well too. So um, we were we were set. We were fine. We were ready to go into next year. You know, um, this all just kind of came about. I don't know a month ago, uh, maybe a couple months ago, where we started talking about uh, forming an alliance and working on chassis and continuing to service them with Rowdy Manufacturing and things like that and what that could look like and trying to broaden the scope of that to all Chevy teams and then. I think it was his bright idea where he was like, why are you even doing this? Like, why don't we just do it? Why don't we just take it over? Why don't we just, and I'm like, okay, well make it worth my while. So, um, that's kind of how it happened. And, um, it literally happened, uh, very, very quick. So, uh, time flew by and rumors flew fast. And then, um, we obviously made our announcement this week. All right. We're going to go to Dustin and then Holly up front. I know there's a lot of hands up. Just hang with me. We're going to get to as many people as we can. Go ahead, Dustin. <clears throat> Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Jeff, um, you certainly made a lot of different moves over the last few years in, in growing the operation, but certainly with, with, with this one and, and with going after the Live Fast Charter, those are, those are bigger moves. Why are these happening now, you know, in terms of wanting to you talk about being real? Why weren't you guys doing this two years ago, especially like the Live Fast Charter when things were so much cheaper? Why weren't you jumping in as opposed to when the prices were so much, relatively speaking, higher? Um, well, I mean, the, the, I don't know how to answer that, Dustin. I mean, the, the market's the market, it's just right? Time. Well, I mean, wh wh why? Yeah, why, why, why now? now? Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, a lot of it's just timing, right? So, um, you know, when, when, when our talks got serious, it was um, like, look, uh, for us, as far as like where we're at in our, plan like we're, we're, we're probably a few months ahead of you guys you know on, on what we're trying to do um, well when you have we can't run three out of our place right now so um, and we've looked at buildings all over the place we've looked at you know three three million dollar buildings and 50 million dollar buildings um, you know um, but that was the urgency to kind of like with Kyle right and what he's speaking to was we need space in Daytona's in February right um, and then on the charter again we we, we just we think these things are still going this way, right? And we hope they are. And I think that's a, I, I don't think that's just from a team perspective. I think that's from a NASCAR perspective too. I think we all like uh, want that to happen, right? So um, again, that if the numbers are here, you know, like, you know, look, I think our banks are, are um, I think their fund meter is pegged with us. And so I think that uh, um, before it gets up here, if if TJ and I were going to try to take another, you know, crack at this, we had to, right? So again, I think um, I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, I, I'm a believer, and sometimes you know, decisions get made for you, and, and you know, that's that's why all these things are kind of like happening, boom, boom, boom. Um, yeah. Is is it just you and TJ? Obviously, I know with Gainbridge coming in with with Dan's involvement, and he's been very involved in, in motorsports, especially on the Andretti side. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still? Is it just you and TJ owners, or is yeah. Dan come in, or is anybody or any other minor? No, I mean minor owners. Well, look, I don't want to minimize, um, you know, um, Gainbridge's involvement with us. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a big deal for us, right? And uh, um, you know, like we were saying it in the moment, it's just like that Gainbridge deal on its own is big for us, you know. Um, to make it anything more than that, um, I get it. You know, they're they're certainly you know making moves and making waves over there. 
But um, this is TJ and I's, and, uh, and it'll continue to be. Uh, Kyle, just for a track question is, with where you are in points, this type of wild card race, does it change anything? Obviously, I know you won here, so it's not like, I mean, you can do it again. But how do you approach this weekend? Is it change because of your positioning? Um, no, it doesn't change. I think you come in here um, stress meter pegged, um, regardless of whether you're 30 to the good or 30 to behind, you know. Um, we obviously know in our situation we're, we're further behind, so you, you have to race. I think it's been more sought out to just race these races and, and run them normal and not hang out in the back and try to wait for something to happen because with these cars and the way the race plays out, it's so hard to make moves and make passes and get yourself track position whenever, the heck, whenever you want it. You can't. Um, so you've got to hold it when you got it, and um, if you don't have it, then you got to figure out how to fuel save so you can uh, short pit guys and jump them on pit road. You know what I mean? So there's um, so many variables. Uh, you just got to race it out and don't worry about it. What happens, happens. All right, go ahead. Uh, Marshall Smith, Sanford University. So <clears throat> what will the acquisition look like for KBM employees, or will that be sorted out in the coming weeks? Yeah, so that was a big talking point that Jeff and I had from the very beginning was obviously the people. Uh, we went through this situation say 14 months ago of whether or not we were going to be a team um, with my transition from, you know, JGR Toyota over to RCR Chevrolet. So um, that same focal was brought up with Jeff. And not only does he need a building, yeah, we needed it. he needs people, <laughs> Yeah, you know. So uh, we've got a really, really great group of guys and girls that, that work at KBM, and they're a strong group, and they know how to build fast race trucks. Um, and so – do some of those get absorbed into cup programs? Possibly. Do some of those stay with the truck program? Possibly. But they all are safe if they want to be. And if they want to have a job, they they talk to the, the Spire group and they go through. They're already vetted, right? But they just go through the hiring process uh, with a new organization. All right, Shane. We'll be up right behind you. There you go. Shane Connick, the Charlotte Observer. Kyle, um, obviously, you know, this news today or this past week with, um, you know, selling your team um, at this point, what does it mean to you, though, to be able to stay around involved in racing, obviously? You know, you know you're already a two-time Cup Series champion still, you know, in the playoffs at this point, but what does it mean to you to be able to be around and impact other drivers? Yeah, uh, I love it. Look, I I've, I've didn't necessarily start KBM, I guess, as, as – sort of a fun venture for me to go run truck races, although it was, but back in that day, you could run as many as you wanted. And the last few years, you can only run five. So, um, you know, my involvement has been limited, I guess you'd say, um, just not being able to run as much as I'd like, but um, still being there and being with the kids that have come through there, whether it's been Eric Jones, Christopher Bell, William Byron, Daniel Suarez, uh, Bubba Wallace, you, you name them. Um, we, we've worked with them and I've worked with them and coached them and talked to them. And, um, I remember Suarez, it was like literally every Thursday at two o'clock, he must've had an alarm set. He would call me, Hey man, we're going so-and-so this weekend. What, what, what can you tell me? You know? So, um, it was really, really fun to, to help those guys and get those guys to, to where they are. Obviously they've got talent. They've done it themselves as well, but, uh, to still have the opportunity that Jeff's allowed me to be involved is going to be fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to whoever's next in the pipeline to uh, continue to evolve. I know uh, Sanchez, if, if, if he's back again next year, which I believe to be, then you know I'll be there doing the same stuff. Chase as well. All right. Go ahead. Uh, Maxwell Donaldson, Gods and Times. This is for Kyle. You mentioned Chase Purdy. What have you seen from him in his first year with KBM? And obviously this is his home track. Um, what kind of emotions go into running at your home track kind of? Yeah, if Talladega was my home track, I have no clue how to sort that one out. Um, man, that's a dreadful, uh, that's a love dread situation right there. Um, you know, but yeah, Chase is coming on board this year has been really good. I raced with him a few times back in super late models years ago. But, um, you know, his progression this year started out a little bit light, a little timid, you know, just a little like don't want to crash anything, don't want to tear anything up. And then it was kind of like, dude, like, let's go. Don't worry about it. Put it out there. Put the put her in the wind. And, um, you know, I, I think we've kind of seen that the last four or five races that, um, you know, he's done a lot better. We've lost track position on pit road and put him behind. And, um, you know, going into the race, we haven't made quite the perfect adjustments at each time to, to keep his 
track position per se, but um, no, he's he's getting better and um, coming into Talladega, it's it's any man's show. So it's cool to see him on the pole. That must be feel good to be on the pole for the you know your home event, but um, got to keep it there. All right, we're gonna go to Gwen. Steven, and then we're going to wrap with Lee. Go ahead, Gwen. Thank you. Hi, Gwen DeRue with the Birmingham Times. In your strategic planning and looking ahead, <laughs> are there any women that you're focused on or looking at for being involved with your team efforts? With the race team? Um, yeah, I mean, actually, the, the Toyota guys, um, they've got four of them yeah. running at, Ke at Keith Coons right now in the midget program. So... Uh, you've got Jade, you've got Taylor, you've got Mariah Ede. and Kaylee Bryson, right? Yeah. So, yeah, there's four of them over there. And then uh, I know Chevy, we had one. What was the super late model? The girl Hedinger. Yeah, Katie, yeah, thank Hedinger. you. Yeah, so there, there's, a, there's a few out there. Um, it's just a matter of continuing to, to evolve and get better and, and build themselves, um, see results and things like that. So um, definitely a lot of potential. So we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, Lee, and then we'll get a mic, Stephen, up front. Kyle, I just wanted to ask, you had three wins so quickly in your transition with RCR. Have the other teams caught up, or, you know, why has there – I don't know. I guess when you were that good to start out with, we just expected it to continue. What is? What do you need to keep putting up something in the W column? Yeah. Um, I Trust me, I see it too. Um, <laughs> I think when we've had really good cars, I've just over tried and, you know, you used 2017, 18, whatever, when we were super fast all the time, like I always think back to the, the golden days, um, you could drive from the back of the field to the front of the field, you know, you can make something happen. And I still feel like I can do that and I can drive from the back of the field to the front of the field. But in reality, with this car and equipment, and everything being so equal, talent being so equal, SMT data, everybody seeing it being so equal, it's, it's tougher than ever to pass the guy in front of you. So um, that I guess that's kind of been um, a bit of my demise, which is I, I don't feel like I can do as much as I want to be able to do. So me, tr me, me over trying has sort of hurt my race craft, if you will, where I haven't been finishing, um, frankly. Um, I, so with me in this next gen car, look at how many times I've spun out and crashed. You know what I mean? Like it's just stupid uh, compared to what it has been over, over time. So. I still got some work to do on figuring that out, but also just need to, I'm a very non-patient person, so <laughs> you got to show some patience in these races. They're long races, you know, last week in the first stage, pushing and uh, literally then just telling myself, okay, forget it, back up, like just let's finish this stage and then swapping ends, you know what I mean? So like I just finished telling myself to just make it to the end of the stage and I'm backwards. So um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly, but we got to fix it. I got to fix it. All right, we'll take our final question up front with Steven. Steven Toronto, CBS Sports. This will be a question for Jeff. Uh, Jeff, when Spire started its Cup Series team, uh, from the outset in 28, 2019, you, were, you guys were very clear that you had a plan to build this team into something that was competitive and something that was consequential. Now we're five years into that, and you've reached that point. With these transactions between the Live Fast Charter and now the acquisition of uh, KBM, was that part of the original plan or was this something that developed as you were trying to figure out how to take it to the next level over the next five years or so? Well, I mean, it probably wasn't live fast slash KBM, right? But um, yeah, I mean, uh, look, in the office, um, it's like, I guess the way that we carry ourselves over there and the way everybody's talking is like, we're right on plan. You know, like, um, you know, we make, we're not just like throwing it up against the wall. I mean, sometimes it may, you know, appear that way, but, um, you know, we're pretty deliberate in, in what we want to do. And we have the patience and the relationships, um, not only for us, right? I mean, we've done what we're doing. We've done for plenty of teams that are back there right now. And so, um, look, I think we're, we're, um, we're opportunistic when we, when we can be. Um, but as far as on our timeline, it's like the only we're probably on we're probably on time competitively i mean as much as you know i think it's just our nature right we you want to go faster and you want to finish better you know every week even when we were in the back we were you know the races for 31st were as intense for us you know as, as you know getting into the top 10 so 
that's really the only thing that gives me like, you know, I guess heartache or keeps me up at night. It's not, it's not the stuff we're kind of like talking about here. It's the stuff that goes on on the racetrack, you know, where, um, you know, um, you know, like obviously we, you know, we want, we wanted that 77 to, to be better this year. And that, that probably took five years off my life this summer, just trying to come up with ways that we could, we could do that. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure if that answers all of that, but it's like really the only thing that I don't feel like we're on time on time about is, is, um, is the results for two cars. And just as long as you mentioned the, uh, 77, do you have any idea what that's going to look like for 2024 yet or? Well, I mean, in the, yes and no. I mean, uh, um, I think that'll come into, uh, into focus here in the next few weeks, you know, but, um, in the meantime, we're just going to keep giving, um, giving that group all the tools and resources they need to, to finish this year strong, but, um, we're working on it, you know, but, um, we'll see. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, Jeff, thank you both for spending so much time with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Kyle, best of luck this weekend. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Same for you, Jeff, as well.